Mr. Adam. I, I thank the uh, Senator from Maine for her graciousness and for her leadership uh, on this important amendment that she and I have brought to the floor. Uh, clearly, uh, the 2012 Ag Appropriations Bill uh, that will direct the USDA to provide adequate flexibility for schools to deliver students nutritious school meals while effectively managing costs is very, very important. But we've got to do it in the right way, and I want to just share my thinking on what the right way is. In January of this year, the USDA issued a proposed rule for nutrition standards in the national school lunch and school breakfast programs that would limit total servings of certain vegetables, most notably potatoes, corn, green peas, and lima beans, to one cup per week and eliminate potatoes from school breakfast. And I've heard from school lunch providers in Colorado that this restriction result in significant challenges for food service operations through increased costs, reduced flexibility, and decreased school meal participation. Now, this is especially concerning for them in my state, and I think as the Senator from Maine has pointed out, all over our country, because school districts are facing increasingly tight budgets. Many children from Colorado and across the nation depend on school meal programs to keep them nourished and ready to learn. And that's why it is important for school meals to include healthy food options, while then also allowing sufficient flexibility to school meal providers to help build a foundation for healthy eating going forward. In order to achieve this goal, a very worthy goal, it's important that we implement the bipartisan child nutrition reauthorization that the Congress passed last year. And in order to assure that that implementation is successful for both kids and schools, it's important that the USDA takes into consideration the insights and the experiences of those who are in the school cafeterias every day across America serving meals to our children. These are well-trained and qualified individuals who see our children, our students, on a daily basis. They know their parents, and they very uh, well may be parents of students themselves. And here's what they're saying, Mr. President, Let me, and I'll read to you from a letter that the Colorado School Nutrition Association sent me recently regarding this proposed rule. Quote, we believe it is a realistic and attainable goal to create meal plans that meet the current dietary guidelines for Americans while allowing schools the flexibility to manage costs and maintain student participation. Improved nutrition is a vital aspect of our nation's health, one which we heartily support and we believe it can be accomplished without significant damage to the programs we are trying to improve and without additional strain on local schools." End of quote. Mr. President, that is what the Collins Udall Amendment intends to do. It would direct the USDA to not set maximum limits on the frequency that schools can serve any one fruit or vegetable while allowing schools to continue to moderate portion size appropriately. Our amendment will also ensure that schools have the flexibility to serve healthy fruits and vegetables in a manner consistent with guidelines established jointly by the USDA and the Department of Health and Human Services called the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. Now, some wonder why Senator Collins and I have taken such issue with this proposed rule. And yes, we both do come from potato-producing states, and we both believe that potatoes have gotten a bad rap. The truth is that when prepared properly, the potato can provide critical nutrients to students that will help them lead healthy lives and be ready to learn in the classroom. And in some areas, increased flexibility to serve this nutritious and available vegetable can actually help schools manage costs so they can afford to purchase other more expensive vegetables. Where I believe school meal providers, potato producers, and health advocates can agree is that this issue is less about any one vegetable and more about the preparation of the vegetable. Anything can be fried or drowned in any number of fats available to us as consumers, let's be honest. Even Agriculture Secretary Vilsack agreed in testimony before the Senate Agricultural Appropriations Committee that it's not the potato, it's in the way in which potatoes are being prepared and provided. We should be encouraging schools to prepare potatoes and other fruits and vegetables appropriately, not limiting their flexibility and potentially increasing their costs unnecessarily. Now, Mr. President, 
I've spent a good portion of my time in the U.S. Congress working to promote physical activity, get children and families into the great outdoors, and reduce the amount of time children fund, spend in front of the TV and video games. Through my Healthy Kids from Day One Act and the National Kids to Parks Initiative, I've focused on getting kids to eat healthier and become more active. And another way we promote healthy lifestyles is making sure that kids have access to needed nutrients and balanced meals. That's why Congress, that's us, directed the USDA to ensure that all fruits and vegetables are part of federal food nutrition programs, particularly school meal programs. I believe, I know Senator Collins believes, there's a balance that we can find here, a balance that preserves needed flexibility for our cash-strapped schools, but also preserves guidelines that will ensure our kids are getting the best nutrients possible in their school meals, including from the potato. So instead of pointing fingers, we need to provide common sense solutions that help schools, kids, and their parents make wise choices that in turn will make a healthier America. A healthy country is a strong country. And I believe that this amendment is an important tool to ensure that our schools can be an active an effective participant in ensuring our children are healthy, well cared for, and ready to become the next leaders in our goal of winning the global economic race. I thank the Senator from Maine for yielding time. I look forward to continuing to work with her until uh, we reach a successful conclusion in our amendment as agreed to.